Javante Tank Davis, let Shakur Stevenson and Devin Haney know y'all ain't built like that, bro. Y'all ain't been through what I've been through. You just stealing my story. And he's back in camp preparing for a new opponent. Let's talk about this all in this video. And I want to focus on what he meant in this tweet that I believe was to Shakur Stevenson and Devin Haney. And then I also want to talk about who he is going to be fighting on November the 2nd in this video. So please, like I said, smash the like sub to the channel. Share the video. Catch me live Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday night at 7.30. I'm also live every Sunday morning with the Sangin OG KQKC Boxing Network. Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. I ask that you join the channel as a member. Um, drop super chats and super thanks. And if you want to debate, knockoutboxing86 at yahoo.com is the email address. Let's get to it, though. So, Javante Tank Davis, like clockwork, man. He drops a cryptic tweet, and then the next day, a picture of him training, being in camp, comes out. We know we get another Tank Davis fight. The worst kept secret in boxing was that Tank Davis was coming back again this year. We all knew that he was coming back this year. But now that he's in camp with Richardson Hitchens, we can really dive in and talk about who he may be fighting and, and, and things of that nature. If you follow Tank Davis, you know that he's not really on Twitter a lot unless he is in camp for a fight. And so when the tweet came out, y'all ain't been through it. Y'all just stealing my story. I'm paraphrasing. Um, y'all ain't go through what I go through. Y'all just stealing my story. I, you all, the, you always have to try to dive in and figure out who the hell he talking to, what he mean, because that's just him. That's just what he do. It's one thing that I don't like about him. It's one thing that I don't, don't like about Earl Spence. I wish that they would be a little bit more direct on social media, but I take that because they're much more direct with how they approach their work in the ring. So they're indirect on Twitter. They may give you cryptic tweets. You may have to decipher some shit who they talking to, who they talking about. But Tank Davis and Earl Spence going to be right at your ass when that bell ring when it's time to fight. They're going to be right there with you trying to get, trying to beat your ass up. In the case of Tank Davis, he trying to set you up and knock you the hell out. In the case of Earl Spence, he trying to whoop on your ass. So I, I take that. And some indirect tweets over guys that's much more direct in they tweet, that talk a whole lot of shit in they tweet, and then get in the ring and don't fight nothing like how they talk about. And if it hits your fighter, favorite fighter in the nose, what I just said, then it just hits your favorite fighter in the fucking nose. Yeah, we looking at you, Shakur Stevens, and you don't tweet nothing like how you talk. Straight up. But anyway, Tank Davis's tweet, why I believe it was directed at Shakur Stevenson and, 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 and Devin Haney. And you know, like I said, bro, you got to turn in a shirt like home to find out what the fuck he's talking about. But I believe that it was at them because Tank Davis let it be known against Frank Martin that he watching everybody, he watching everything, he see what everybody's saying, he see what everybody's doing, he know who your sparring partners is, he know who your, um, who your, who, how you look in camp, he know what tension you got in camp, he know everything that's going on with his eyes. Which I think is one of the things about Tank Davis that is highly underrated is how strategic he is, how he moves. And you can see it, and I've said this before, the way that he fights kind of mimics how he views people outside of the ring. Always watching, always looking, poking holes in people, seeing how people act, seeing how they react to shit. He fights in the ring the same way. So very, very funny um, and very, very interesting um, that, that he moves that way. Now... Um, the reason specifically is I was getting to why I think that, that tweet, and then we'll get into who he's fighting now that he's back in camp, is directed specifically at Shakur Stevenson and Devin Haney is because, like I said, he watching them. He see Devin at the fair, um, fighting people, th trying to throw punches at guys. He sees Shakur Stevenson imploding and, and, and going through it and, and acting emotional and, 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 and being ran off of Twitter and, and all kind of shit. And he's letting them, and, and, and kind of how they try to act tough and, and, and all of the things that they're doing to try to put on this bravado or put on this image that they're a tough guy, that they're um, really about that life, so to speak, and things of that nature. And I believe he's letting them know, like, bro, y'all ain't been through that shit. Y'all ain't, you just, you just telling my story. Meaning, like, Shakur Stevenson, bro, you, you had your mama and your granddaddy. I didn't grow up like that. I had, I, I went to foster care, bro. Devin Haney, you had your whole family, bro. You fighting on the streets now. You done made it millions of dollars and, 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 and you were named now. I was fighting on the streets, and that's how I got in the boxing car. I was fighting on the streets too much, so they took me to the gym because I was just getting into fights for no reason on the goddamn streets. Like, I, I really believe that that's what that shit mean, bro. That's what that shit mean. Like, you guys are out here doing some shit to put on a facade or to be something that you're not. I really live this shit. 
I really live this shit. Like, Shakur, you talking about you in the trap and you this and you that. And, boy, you had your mama. You had your granddaddy as a father figure. Y'all saw what, y'all saw what, what I had to do because of how my mama was with me and my, my siblings. When your mama was having trouble, and this is no disrespect to Tank Davis's mother, bro. I don't mean no disrespect, but these are the facts of the situation. When Tank Davis's mother was having trouble with him because of certain circumstances and certain decisions that she made, he ended up in foster care. When Shakur Stevenson's mother needed help with him and, and, and his siblings, Wally Moses, his grandfather, step in. Like, it's different, bro. It's, it's totally different. Devin Haney is fighting on the streets because people are in his head. People are, 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 are fucking with him. His mental is fucked up. He's not handling what happened with Ryan Garcia very well. So any little thing is setting him off, and now he's making stupid-ass decisions, trying to throw punches at people on the street in public where people are recording him and shit. Tank Davis really grew up fighting in the streets, bro. It's, it's a difference, dog. And so I believe specifically, could be dead-ass wrong, but we're here to give you your opinion. That's what we started this channel for, to give you our opinion on boxing. I believe that specific tweet. You ain't go through it. You just stealing my story. I believe that it's directly, directly at Shakur Stevenson and Devin the Dream Haney. Now, off of that, Tank Davis is in camp. Richardson Hitchin, as I said earlier in this video, posted him and Tank in the gym, getting in there work, saying this camp is going to be fun. And again, we know Tank go on Twitter when he in camp. Tweet, then the very next day, picture services of him and Richardson Hitchens in camp. So let's talk about who is he fighting November the 2nd? Who is he fighting November the 2nd? As time has gone on, as we, I've done more research on this, I'm eliminating Edwin De Los Santos. I do not think there's any way he fights Edwin De Los Santos next. And I believe for the main reasons is number one, Edwin De Los Santos is coming off of a loss and Edwin De Los Santos is coming off of an injury. The re Edwin De Los Santos was supposed to be on Tank's undercard when Tank Davis fought Frank Martin in June, but he couldn't make the undercard because he had his, he had an injury. We don't know if that injury is healed. We don't know if, if he's 100%. And Edwin De Los Santos had a bad performance at Shakur Stevenson. Obviously, we highlight Shakur Stevenson's performance in that fight because he's the star. He's supposed to be the pound-for-pound pound level fighter. He's the multiple division champion. He's the unified champion. So he's the one that people are going to highlight and people are going to talk about. That's just the nature of the beast. That's just how the shit go. And I hate that his fans are crybaby-ass people that be like, why y'all don't talk about what Edwin did in that fight? It's Edwin's responsibility, too. He's not the one that people look at. He's not the star, bro. He's not the one that is the proclaimed pound-for-pound, pound, up next, next Mayweather, next Crawford, co-signed by Crawford, co-signed by Andre Ward, co-signed by Floyd Mayweather himself. That's not who Edwin is. That's who Shakur is supposed to be. He gets way more credit and way more praise, so he's going to get way more fucking um, criticism when it's time for that shit. Bro, like, people be playing dumb. But anyway, that's a whole other thing. Back to Edwin. So, Edwin's coming off of a bad performance, and he's coming off of a loss. So, just in the ring, from a competitive standpoint, how Tank Davis has been selecting opponents, he doesn't move like that. Tank Davis has a, a well-documented history of fighting fighters coming off of Great performances or fighters that are still undefeated. When you think of Pedraza, undefeated champion. When you think of Mario Barrios, undefeated champion. When you think of Ryan Garcia, undefeated, coming off of a great performance against um, Javier Fortuna. You think of Hector Luis Garcia, undefeated, coming off of a great performance against um, Chris Colbert. You think of Leo Santa Cruz, coming off of um, a winning streak. And he had beat every man he had ever been in the ring with. Yes, he had a loss on his resume, but he had already avenged that loss. So for in all intents and purposes, he was practically an undefeated fighter. And if you don't want to call him undefeated, I understand he has the one loss on his resume, but he avenged that loss. So Leo Santa Cruz, another great opponent. Um, Frank Martin, undefeated fighter, coming off of good performances. So Edwin just doesn't fit what Tank Davis history tells us that he will do. And I tell you guys all the time, when you want to analyze something, when you want to break something down, Always look at what people have done in the past, and that'll give you a good indication of what they will do in the future. So based on the history, we know that if Tank Davis chooses Edwin De Los Santos, that's going to go against how he has moved historically throughout his career. Even Roley Romero's trash ass was undefeated. And we and Roley is garbage. And you can explain Roley by the fact 
that Floyd Mayweather wanted Tank and Rosie to fight because Tank was coming to the end of his contract. He wanted to make some money off of Tank. It's an in-house fight for Mayweather Promotions where Floyd gets to keep all the money. So he made Tank fight Rosie. Promoters do that shit all the time. Oh, you about to leave? Oh, your contract is coming up? Oh, you ain't going to resign to me? I'm going to make sure I can get as much money off of you as possible. But even Rowley's trash ass was undefeated at the time. So Edwin De La Santos, I don't think it's him for those reasons inside the ring. And if we talk about outside the ring, there, there are other fighters that I'm going to mention that I think it could be the tank is fighting that you can sell way better than you can sell Edwin. Right? And there's no disrespect to Edwin because Edwin is a really good fighter, but... He just don't have a fan base, right? No disrespect to the Dominicans, but the Dominican Republic uh, fans, they don't really ride for Edwin like that, number one. Number two, he's not somebody that you can announce and then hope that you can sell the fight leading up to the fight, meaning he's not a fighter that you can announce and then he can go Roly Romero, say some crazy shit, talk a bunch of shit, say a bunch of jokes, and then make people be like, all right, I'm going to tune in and watch this shit because Roly talking crazy. You know, he can go on interviews, talk crazy. He can talk crazy to Tank at the press conference. Edwin can't even do that. So you can't even sell it because Edwin doesn't, there's a language barrier there. You need a translator there. So on top of him being relatively unknown, he's not a relatively unknown fighter like a Frank Martin, for instance, who what? Not a lot of people know him. We know him. You watching this video as diehard boxing fans, but the casual fan don't know him. But what did the casual fan see? Oh, Frank Martin talking shit back to Tank Davis. Oh, Frank Martin and Tank Davis going back and forth, going at it. Oh, did you see the flinch? Did you see what Frank Martin said? Like, his interviews and shit, like, you, he could sell that shit. So from a business perspective, Edwin De La Santos don't make sense. So that's why I'm kind of out on Edwin, because Edwin is coming off of a loss. He's coming off of an injury and a bad performance, and it's a hard sell. And I tell y'all, bro, Tank Davis cannot go backwards from Frank Martin. Everything, and he understands that and his team understands that. Everything from Frank Martin needs to be bigger and build his way back up to where for him and his fans and his team can hopefully get back to where he's doing close to Ryan Garcia numbers on a consistent basis no matter who he fights. That's far-fetched, right? For him to get that far, we understand that, but that is the goal. But at the very least, the bare minimum is you did this three hundred fifty to 400000 with Frank Martin. You need to be in fights where you're going to do at least at minimum around those numbers and fights that could potentially be bigger. And Edwin De La Santos just don't do that for him. So I don't think it's going to be Edwin. To me, that leaves two people, right? You got Jose Rayo Valenzuela and Vasily Lomachenko. Jose Rayo Valenzuela, yes, he got knocked out by Edwin De La Santos. But in his advantage... He got knocked out by Edwin, then he turned around and he had the Chris Colbert thing where he, he, he lost to Chris Colbert in a controversial decision, but then came back and got a knockout of the year candidate against Chris Colbert. After getting a knockout of the year uh, candidate against Chris Colbert, he turns around, boxes a clinic against Pitbull Cruz. He just has better performances under his belt where Edwin has kind of lost his momentum. Yes, bah, knocked Ryo ass out since then. You got what happened with Shakur Stevenson in a dud of a fight, and we haven't seen him since. So the last that any fight fan has seen of Edwin is the Shakur Stevenson fight, plus he's coming off of an injury. Ryo not only is coming off of a great performance against Pitbull and a great performance against Colbert, Ryo is also a champion at 140 pounds. Make no mistake about it if you're watching this video. I don't want this fight. I think it's a bad fight. I don't want to see Tank Davis in a fight that is potentially one-sided. But from Tank Davis' history, it makes sense. A guy coming off of a great victory, a guy that's a champion, a guy that they can sell because unlike Edwin, there's no language barrier there, right? Ryo speaks very well. He's eloquent. You can understand him. He's going to be able to help Tank sell the fight at the press conference. And unlike the Dominican fans, no, again, no disrespect, the Mexican fans one of the best fan bases in boxing, they're going to get behind Ryo. Ryo, they, they do it very well. If they have a fighter that's of Mexican descent that is fighting in a big fight, the Mexican flag is going to come out, the heritage and the pride for their country and their uh, culture is going to come out, and they are going to show up. They're going to buy tickets. They're going to buy pay-per-views. They're going to have cervezas. They're going to have their Coronas. 
They're going to have their dos and they're going to throw fight parties and they're going to show up and they're going to show out. They're going to cook some goddamn enchiladas and tacos. They're going to turn up and they're going to support. So from a business standpoint, to be able to sell the fight and the fan base that would be back in Rio, it makes sense. Also, from a um, from Rio's last two performances, you can sell, you can show the Chris Colbert highlights. You can show, hey, he did this against Pitbull. Pitbull was more competitive against Tank Davis. They can sell that shit to the public for it to do good business. Um, the questions I have about the fight that I want to address, is it at 135? Is it at 140? If Rio's fighting Tank Davis, he bringing his ass back down to 135 because that way they can put both belts on the line, makes it a bigger fight, makes people gravitate to it more. Oh, Tank Davis fighting for belts in two divisions at one time, similar to what happened with the Leo Santa Cruz fight. It's not unprecedented. They've done this in the WBA before. They can fight down at 135, put Tank's 135 WBA on the line, and Ryo's 140-pound WBA on the line. And I think Tank Davis is well aware that if he's going up to 140, Ryo is not going to be the person that you want that people want to see you fight at 140. We all know the names, Devin Haney, Teofimo Lopez. Those are the guys at 140 that people want to see Tank Davis mix it up with. No one's checking for Ryo at 140. So if we do get the Ryo fight, expect it to be met with a lot of criticism from me and from others just because I don't think it's a really good fight. Um, but also expect it to be at 135. He's not going to move up to 140 to fight Ryo. They're going to make Ryo come down to 135. Tank is the A-side. Ryo the one getting the shot. He's going to bring his ass to where Tank Davis is comfortable. That's at 135 pounds. He already got the reach advantage over Tank. He already got the height advantage over Tank. He's not going to Ryo weight class, dog. Ryo coming down to 135, and that way they can put the 135 and 140-pound title on the line if it does indeed mean that it's going to be Jose Rayo Valenzuela. Um, Dark Horse, the only other name that makes any kind of sense that meets the criteria of Tank Davis coming off of a great performance, being a fight that will be bigger than Frank Martin, um, being a fight that, 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 that they can sell, um, is Vasily Lomachenko, right? Vasily Lomachenko is going quiet. Top rank is going quiet. Um, Tank Davis has remained quiet. The PBC has remained quiet. And it was kind of... Um, I don't want to say odd because Tank Davis don't say much anyway, but it was kind of like odd when, when Lomachenko pulled out. All Tank Davis posted was backpedaling, shadow, shadow boxing on the treadmill like he wasn't worried about nothing. Like he ain't give a fuck about shit. You know what I mean? Like he he, he was cool. And then you have the, the situation with Shakur Stevenson and how Lomachenko was just so, oh, I'll, I'll fight you, Shakur. I'll, I'll fight you right now for free. You know. Did Tank Davis and his team reapproach Lomachenko and get the fight done? Um, he could be a dark horse in all of this. Um, but as a betting man, as a betting man, I wouldn't bet on Lomachenko. I would hope for it. Um, I would hope that they got back in touch with Loma and top ranking like, look, bro, what, what's up? The time is now. Shakur is not going to be available for two fights, right? You got... Um, Berenchik, your countryman, you ain't gonna fight him. Where else can you get this type of money, bro? Where else can you get this type of bread? You know, what's it gonna take to get this fight done? Top rank ESPN, Bob, Aegis, Loma, what, what we gotta do? Um, because it, it takes nothing to re-engage and get the fight done um, and, and see what happens. So you would hope that it would be Lomachenko um, of, of, of these two names, but that's really all that's left. You got Ryo, the obvious pick, in my opinion, the uh, the one that's the most predictable, right? The one that where no one will be surprised. And then you got Lomachenko where people would be surprised pleasantly, but kind of not really, right? Like it, it wouldn't be too surprising to know that Tank Davis' team reached out to Lomachenko after Loma pulled out and got the deal done um, to, to, to make the fight happen. It would be no surprise that if Loma pulled out, um, it was just a, a negotiation tactic, right? Lomas has been in, like, the States this whole time. He never went back to Ukraine. That's another thing. Like, he's he's been here. So how do we know he hasn't been here just training for the fight and they didn't pull the wool over all our eyes, all right? How do we know he didn't he, he, he hasn't been here and it was just him trying to get more money from Tank Davis and get more money in the fight? 
right? Trying to sell his O for a higher price. So we don't know, but we will know soon. Kind of like I said with the Shakur, Shakur Stevens and shit. Bro, you got some time coming up. Like the first bid is August 20th for you and Williams to pay that. We gonna find out sooner or later. We gonna see what the hell is happening. And we saw what the fuck happened. Same thing for, for Tank Davis and Vasily Lomachenko and Tank Davis' next opponent. At some point, bro, we know you fighting in November. Y'all got to announce this shit eventually, and we'll see um, how it plays out. But for me, people talking about Edwin, people talking about uh, Ryo, people talking about Loma. For me, I think it's Ryo, Loma, and then possibly Edwin, um, with Loma obviously being the preferable choice. He already ducked Tank once publicly. We don't know what's going on behind the scenes, but publicly, it's a goddamn duck. But we'll see what happens privately um, behind the scenes and if they were able to get that fight done um, and, and and bring us something that would be a great fight for the sport of boxing. Um, Ryo would be okay. It'd be a good filler fight, um, but it's not anything that anybody on this channel wants, specifically by anybody, I mean me. Um, but that's what I think, bro. Tank Davis back in camp. I think he's preparing for either Ryo or Loma. I don't think it's gonna be Edwin De La Santos. And I think that shot, that that tweet that he that he posted um, earlier, um, a couple of days ago, I think that was definitely directed at Shakur Stevenson and, and Devin the Dream Haney. But y'all let me know what y'all think. Comment below, smash the like, sub to the channel. I'll see y'all soon. Peace.